Hello and welcome to another episode of Building Your Visual Library. As always, I'm your host, Modern Day James. And this week we're going to make sense of the complexity of man-made machines. Speaking of machines, we go to our very own FT30J for more insight on the topic. Hello. We will once again begin by breaking down our subjects into primitive forms, and then analyze the form and function of each of the individual mechanics. Thank you, and let us begin. I'll begin by demonstrating the techniques we'll be using to deconstruct the individual components of machinery. So right now what I'm doing is I'm breaking down this robotic arm that's used in the assembly of automobiles into primitive forms and modified primitives. The perspective on a subject like this with many tilting forms can be quite complicated, so make sure you understand how to place singular forms in perspective before jumping into compound ones. There's no singular method of blocking out a subject. My methods are a combination of the techniques described in Scott Robertson's How to Draw and what I've learned through 3D modeling. It's important to try to stay as fluid as possible, so you can come up with many different methods to accomplish the same thing. Eventually you'll build confidence in your decision making and you'll start to devise your own methods. Once we have all the major forms in place, we've completed the most difficult task in the process. Now we can place in the finalized details in a heavier line weight. I use the heaviest line weight for planes facing away from the light source and on overlapping forms. This will indicate that one form is in front of the other. I think that breaking down a subject in this manner and reconstructing it in a different perspective forces you to think critically about each component in three dimensions and will strengthen your comprehension of it. Be sure to make critical observations about your subject, and take notes if that helps. And be sure to remain cognizant of the fact that each of these components has its own purpose and function. And also I just want to note that even though I'm going to be demonstrating each component in just one perspective, you can apply last episode's technique of sequential rotation to better understand each subject. All right, now I'm just going to finish up this sketch. As I was coming up with the script for this lecture, I realized that there was a ton of parallels between the way these machines worked and how our own bodies do. So I'm going to dedicate the remainder of the video to relating the function of these components to their biological counterparts, and then describing their visual characteristics. I'm currently drawing the batteries, which are the heart of the machine. In our bodies, the heart functions in part to provide the electrical environment necessary for nerves to create electrical stimuli. Much in the same way, the batteries provide the current necessary to power our machine. Looking at the shape of this battery, we see that it's essentially a rectangle with the corners cut away and a cylinder extruded from the front face. I'm also making sure to describe the fact that the cylinder is connected to the main form via a plate and screws. Now I'm just drawing a second battery with a slightly different shape. I'm sketching in a cut line, which indicates that these two pieces were built separately and then assembled together. You'll notice this trait in a lot of man-made objects, because for the most part, they're created piece by piece and then later assembled. Continuing with this anatomy analogy, we have the skeletal components of a machine, which function to provide rigidity and structure. Much like our very own skeleton, there's a diverse array of shapes and functions that these bones can provide. And they articulate with one another in many different ways. Notice that unlike organic shapes, there's a lot more 45 and 90 degree angles present in a man-made object. Also notice that as I'm drawing this, I tend to draw through in a light line weight, which helps me understand what's happening on all sides of the object. Again, if drawing through or any of these techniques are out of your comfort zone, I urge you to go back through the perspective series first, as I'll continue to rely heavily on the previous techniques. I'll often round out the edges in a heavier line weight, much as I described in part 4 of the perspective series.
This third piece serves a similar function to the humeral bone, with the upper end mimicking the upper part of the elbow joint. Some of the bones in the human body, like those of the skull, are permanently fused together. Much in the same way, certain pieces of the mechanical skeleton would be fastened together with bolts. I'm drawing cylinders in each corner to demonstrate the bolts that are fastening the two sides together. You may have noticed that occasionally I'll freehand an ellipse without creating a prism around it, while in other instances I'll begin with a prism and carve away to create a cylindrical form. And again, I'm adding a cut line to indicate that these two pieces were created separately and then assembled together. The shape language of this piece is particularly interesting, with a lot of rounded forms and concentric ellipses. Again, describing points of connection is essential to making mechanical drawings look believable. Bolts, cut lines, 90 and 45 degree angles all help sell a mechanical drawing. Mechanical joints are a subject that could have an entire video dedicated to them, but I only have a short time to describe them here, so be sure to do some independent research. There are six types of joints present in the human body that are directly emulated in points of articulation in machines. The upper part of the joint I'm sketching now is a hinge joint, much like the elbow. The lower cylindrical portion is a swivel or rotating joint, much like you'd find in the spine. The following component has several plane joints, which allow for gliding of one surface over the other. There's innumerable ways in which you can create a mechanical joint. In this case, there are several cylindrical bars, which insert into the larger component and allow it to slide back and forth. Again, keeping in mind that pieces manufactured separately will be assembled and fastened together by screws and bolts. This third joint is yet again a hinge. An important point to note is that despite the first and third joints having the same function, the shapes will ultimately be different. This point is important because as we transition from drawing real-life machines to those of our own design, it'll be to our benefit to have a large repository of joints that we can choose from. Much like the muscles on the human body generate the force necessary to displace the skeleton, hydraulic pumps act to displace the skeletal components of our machines. While the muscles utilize the contraction of millions of nanoscopic proteins to generate force, the hydraulic pump takes advantage of Pascal's principle to create movement. Anyway, seeing that this isn't a science class, I think the most important takeaway is that you'll see these anywhere you want to articulate around a mechanical joint. While they can come in different shapes and sizes, they're typically composed of a series of concentric cylinders. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think having a stronger understanding of the form and function of each of these components will help you incorporate it into your visual library and allow you to call back to them anytime that you're creating your own designs. So take a look at some reference and try this out for yourself. Breaking a subject down piece by piece into its core components will help make an insurmountable task seem a lot more manageable. And that's it for me guys. If you like this video, please subscribe. I'll be releasing new videos every Thursday and live streaming Friday through Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can support the channel by subscribing on Patreon. We have a ton of cool perks like access to the archive of live streams, critiques during the live streams, group lessons, and one-on-one -on -one lessons. And don't forget to join us on Discord. Thanks guys. See you again next week.